Hi everyone. Uh, now I want to walk through this notebook. So this notebook covers the train test split and cross validation. As usual, I'm going to import our standard Python libraries uh, for uh, data processing, uh, visualization, and we'll use the scikit-learn linear regressions package uh, for modeling. Um, in this notebook, we're also going to use a data set which consists of the, uh, well, we're going to use a data set from the Seaborn uh, library. And this data set uh, describes the miles per gallon of various vehicles. Um, so actually, let's take a look. So data here. Uh, so we, we have the miles per gallon for various vehicles uh, and then descriptions of characteristics of those vehicles. So cylinders, uh, displacement, horsepower, so description of the engine, um, uh, mechanical properties, the, the, the effective uh the effective acceleration of vehicles or the ability to accelerate um, the weight of the car uh, and then the actual acceleration, the model year, um, where the, the vehicle is made um, and, it, and a description of the name of that vehicle. All right, so that's the data. Um, this is a, a pretty uh, standard data set uh, and it'll be a good data set for us to, to uh, apply regression techniques. So you could imagine saying that, well, you know, what if you got a new car and you want to guess are the miles per gallon of that car, or you want to estimate the miles per gallon of that car based on characteristics of the vehicle, um, or or maybe you're more interested in knowing whether or not the miles per gallon of a car that you observe is you know far away from what you might have predicted using things like the cylinder, or the characteristics of the vehicle. All right, so we're going to start the train test split, and so the idea is here is we're going to split our data into a training subset and a test subset. The training subset which we will use to both train our model and do any uh, model design. And then the test subset we will use to verify that our model uh, didn't overfit to the training data. Um, there are a couple ways to construct a training and test split. One way would be to use the pandas library. Uh, so if we use something like the, the sample function, we can sample, uh, in fact, here we'll sample the entire data set and that's gonna shuffle the data for us. So we can get a, a random sample of all the data. It's now shuffled. Um, notice here we're going to use uh, with repl uh, without replacement. So the default setting for, uh, sorry, double tab there. Um, so the default setting is replace false. So we're not going to, uh, uh, we're not going to sample a piece of data twice. So without replacement, if we sample the whole data set, that's essentially constructing a shuffle. So we shuffle the data. Uh, it might actually be good practice, and maybe I should have done this in the original notebook, uh, to set the, well, we can set the state in the call of this so that we shuffle the same way each time. Uh, so this takes an additional argument, random state, so we could set random state to my favorite number, 42. And now if I shuffle it repeatedly, I'll get the same thing. Um, this is still a random shuffle, but with the seed set to 42, means that when I reproduce this notebook, I'll always get the same uh, uh, order of my data, which will give me the same training and test split. So it improves reproducibility. Now that I've shuffled the data, uh, we can take the shuffle data set, look at its size, and here I'll take 95% of that data. Although I guess in, in the earlier lecture we said 90, so I'll take 90% of that data. I'm going to figure out what that is. So actually let's split this into two separate cells. All right, so we'll take this, we'll get our split point. Oh typo there, uh, to get our split point. Um, so th this is going to be 358 of the, the uh, 398 records. Uh, so that's 90% of the data is, is uh, 358 records or the up to 358. Um, so then I can take the training data set and I'll just take my shuffled data. Um, I'm going to use the uh, integer location. So indexing by, by direct location. Um, now this will construct the data from zero to split point and then from split point to the end of the uh, list. So now I have my training and test data sets. Just take a look here. So my training data is a data frame uh, and my test data is also a data frame uh, with far fewer records. So here we have, those are all the records. Um, so that's my entire test data set. Okay. So that's my train test split. Uh, just to make sure everything adds up, I can look at the length of the training and test and it should be equal to the length of the original data set. All right. So that's using pandas. We could also use scikit-learn to do the same thing, and it has built-in functions for constructing training and test splits um, because this is a pretty standard process. So we'll import from the model selection uh, module in scikit-learn the train test split function. Do that here. Uh, and then the train test split function takes something that I can split on its first dimension. So it could be a, a matrix, an array. Uh, in this case, it's going to be a data frame. 
uh, and it's going to get the uh, the test size. So how much of the what fraction did I want to keep for test? So here I'm going to keep 10% uh, for test, and the remainder is going to be used for training. Uh, and I picked a different random state, so 83, uh, and I will get a training and test split um, just as before. So that's my train test split. Uh, it's a different train set test split because I chose a different random state. Uh, but still, split my data, uh, 358 records in the training set, and uh, we, we could check the sizes, but we don't need to do that. All right, so now uh, I want to quickly take a look at what the training test splits look like. So I'm going to create a, a distribution. I actually want to look at the miles per gallon because I'm curious to make sure that there's uh, the train and test splits have uh, at least similar characteristics for the miles per gallon. Now, in practice, we probably shouldn't look at the test data, uh, but again, I just want to give more for illustrative purposes uh, what the train test splits look like. So uh, you'll notice here that training split actually seems a bit broader, so it contains a, a, a larger uh, range of miles per gallon, whereas the test data set seems to be more centered uh, in the, the overall distribution. Now, they should roughly have the same overall distribution, but notice the test data set is much smaller, so it's it's going to, uh, you know, has a less lower chance of having some of these outlier uh, data points. In practice, we wouldn't want to look at our, our test uh, data set, but again, just uh, as a useful visualization to understand uh, what, what happens when we construct a train and test split. All right, so that's the train test split. Uh, the next step in our process um, is going to be building a basic model.